Welcome to episode 16 of the Crave the Book podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be covering chapters 51 through 55 of Tracy Wolf's Crave series. And today's episode is probably going to be one of your favorites if you enjoy Crave, because we're going to be covering the Northern Lights scene with Jackson and Grace. And we are also going to get down to the bottom of some of Leah's weird behavior over the last few chapters. We're also going to be announcing a giveaway that's going to be taking place in our next episode. So you want to make sure that you tune in and subscribe both to our YouTube channel at Crave the Book Podcast and our Spotify and Assorted Playlist channels. But guys, let's get started. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 16 of Crave the Book. In today's episode, we're going to be covering chapters 51 through 55. We have so much to cover today. So, so much. Um, But before we get into it, we do have a couple quick announcements, both of which are super exciting for you. (laughs) We have, for one, a brand new series of videos, I, I guess more like tracks that you can listen to, and they will exclusively be on our YouTube channel. So if you're listening to the podcast from Spotify or Google Podcasts or whatever podcast app that you prefer, make sure that you find the Crave the Book YouTube channel and subscribe because we're going to be doing a series of story ambience uh, tracks, and they'll have little videos to go along with them. But basically, these are tracks that you turn on while you're reading the Crave series, and we're really going to set the mood. And I think that these are going to be really great with Court coming out because you'll have a nice big playlist full of them. But we just released one. It was uh, walking through the snow around the Catmere Academy grounds. Uh, and then next week, we're going to have the Catmere Academy Library study session with Jackson. So if you guys have suggestions for more of them, feel free to shoot us a message at Crave Series Aesthetic on Instagram. That way we can add them into our queue and get more of these out for you. Those are going to air every Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time on the YouTube channel. So that's really exciting news. But we also have a giveaway coming up that you guys are going to learn more about in our episode next week, which will air on December 22nd. And this is another one where you're going to have to listen to know how to enter it. So make sure that you mark your calendars. It is going to be a limited thing. This is for December 22nd, 2021. And if you miss out on that one, you're not going to be able to enter later. So you need to mark it on your calendars if you plan to enter. But since we've got such a long episode ahead of us, uh, Amber, do you want to let listeners know what they should kind of tune their ears in for if they don't want the series spoiled for them? Yes. So if you do not want to brave any of the spoilers, because we will, we will inevitably mention quite a few things here yeah you don't want to hear them then make sure to listen out for the wolf howl Uh, as soon as that noise has been played that means that everything after that sound will probably be a spoiler we will talk about fan theories we will talk about our own uh, experiences in the other books that have been released and also what our hopes and dreams are for court so just make sure to listen out for the wolf and if you have not read past crave i'm gonna say crave because we're gonna also mention it's it's about to get some juicy 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 battle scenes um so if you haven't read read the rest of crave then make sure to tune out and come back when you have finished yeah maybe well i I think that i've got a couple notes that could spoil a little bit of crush as well so ah yeah yes and of all the announcements you didn't mention the most exciting one what your book is ready for pre-order oh yeah that thing (laughs) yeah that thing that That thing thing. you've been working all year on oh you know how many pre-orders i have on my book right now amber how many nine (gasps) 
And that's nine more than you did before you set up for pre-orders. I know. Guys, Um, if you want to support <laughs> me and my first book that I've ever written, um, getting this thing self-published has been one heck of a and, and big adventure. Amber was actually one of the first people to read it, and it has changed dramatically since then, so I'm excited to have her reread <laughs> it. But uh, you can pre-order my book now on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or pretty much anywhere else that you like to read. It is called The Channel. And my name is Starla Moore. And uh, I, I'm hoping to get to 70 sales because if so, that'll push me to number one in the science fiction slash dark romance category. Uh, there is some really fun cybernetics and weird altered hot boys. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> maybe, I'm bad at summarizing maybe, my own book. Maybe you could put a, uh, a signed copy in the Crave giveaway. Ooh, that might be a good idea. I'll have them this Thursday. My my that very is. first shipment will be arriving. But ooh, ooh. but that'll be that'll be a good way for for you to get one more person to have read it and and tell you their experiences. Push just pushing my book on people. Read it. Read my book. It. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> oh God, yeah, guys. If you want to learn more about my book, you can follow my books Instagram. It is sentient. It lives on its own. Uh, but follow me over <laughs> at Explore the Channel. I'm actually going to be doing a big merch. Giveaway way over there for the holidays as well i'm thinking like t-shirt blanket uh stickers my book hardback signed magnet. all the goodies yeah magnet. so go go follow magnet. it all right are we ready to get into yes. the cravey crave adventures of grace in tunnel land <laughs> yes so we left off when grace had been almost chaperoned out of jackson's bedroom uh, after their huge heavy makeout session so that is where we start this chapter yeah um and she's kind of ruminating about the things that she's learned one of which is that flint is trying to kill her and i giggled so much when she was like yeah it still pisses me off I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> i would be a bit more pissed off <laughs> if and, and i definitely wouldn't use oh my way of coping with this is to just avoid that person no <laughs> they're like actively tell trying somebody to me. they're trying to murder me oh i'll just avoid them i'm not gonna text him back <laughs> Yeah, um, that was that was the, my, the first thing that I, I I added to the notes. I just thought that was hilarious. It was just the Grace's way of dealing with it is just nah. I just won't reply. Yeah, she she just saw her uncle, the headmaster of the school. That should have been her first stop. Mm -hmm. um, but then she decides to go to Britlet with uh, with Mackay. Britlet, Britlet, Britlet. <laughs> That's so weird to hear, like, Britlet. Britlet. I didn't realize that that was a category. Like, is our literature any better than anyone else's? Well, English lit is going to be a lot more modern. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, she gets super emotional. And <laughs> I just want to say I've never once gotten emotional reading any old ass Shakespearean literature. No, me neither. And it happens, it happened to Bella reading uh, Romeo and Juliet. It's happening to Grace. I, it, it, here, it in my... in After as well. Yeah, yeah. In, in my experience reading old literature in school, I was barely awake. Like, I can, I, I know <laughs> that I read things. I, I'm sure that I read lots. I can't tell you what all I read other than we had to read... Um, we had to read Exodus for advanced uh, for advanced literature, which I always one? I thought it was I thought it was very strange that they and it, we had to read it as literature, not as religious text. And it was it was yeah. crazy because we had a lot of um, we had a lot of uh, Muslim students in my advanced English class and they like they enjoyed reading it because it was like a, a cool thing where they got to experience, you know, um christianity and compare so it was it was a weird experience um but yeah i, I could never get emotional this you just didn't connect no like especially <laughs> especially the lines that grace was reading i'm just like mm, this is i would be taking a nap during these um yeah I mean, I, my next note was, was it just made me giggle. It was like, there's nothing worse than reading literature out in class. Like, that anxiety of 
having to like do public speaking essentially and then you you trip over your words more than you ever have in your life you realize that you cannot read out loud and i was like oh yes there is There's, there definitely is something worse than reading out literature singing it <laughs> apparently she had to sing no and, no, no. And, uh, no like even if i read that the lines were supposed to be sung i would not commit Oh, no, not at all. And, you know, I uh, part of my entire job, I'm, for those who don't know, I'm a business coach and course creator. And a lot of my job is reading scripts that I have written, um, you know, to, to record in video. And I'm also going to be doing the audiobook for my own book. I read every single night. I read the Warrior series by uh, Aaron Hunter to my daughter. And there are some days where I can read very, very well out loud. I can do the voices. I can get into it. I can go without tripping over a single word. But I have to be in a flow state to do it. And I don't pick what days I'm in a flow state. In fact, most of the time, I have to go back. And my daughter will catch me. She is nine years old. And she'll be like, Mom, that's not what that said. And I'm like, oh, shush. You know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but That's how my parents taught me to read. Out loud? Uh, so they would have the book and they would deliberately read the wrong word. Oh. And so that I would have to catch them out. And eventually I would just be like, no, this is wrong. And then I would take the book off of them and read it myself. Um, and that's how I learned to read at the age of three. Yeah. And I've read alone ever since. <laughs> oh, no. I saw your post in the YA, uh, YA group oh, yeah. today. No, about... it, was, it was one of the things that I like truly i can thank my parents for the rest is a no <laughs> um but it's the one thing that i know that they did right they read to me every single night and i cannot fault them for giving giving me that love of books and the love of literature and i gained so many things from it like not just the ability to imagine but my spelling is way ahead of what a lot of my peers have as their spelling and it, it yeah i i would read and read and read but i devour books i i start on a page and then I'm, i will not stop until it's finished um i used to walk to work reading the books like literally walking crossing roads whilst reading because i couldn't stop and it became a bit too much of an obsession and i did stop for a few years um there was even a point where i read um if anybody knows the gone series by michael grant um I read the first one, loved it so much that I walked to our Waterstones, which is kind of like your Barnes and Nobles. It even has a coffee shop in it. Um, so I would walk there and I would wait for them to open, buy the next book, read that book, and then run back before they shut at five to be able to purchase the next <laughs> book, read that overnight. And I was I would buy the whole series in one week because I was reading it so fast. And I was like, I'm not doing anything else. I'm not like washing my clothes. I'm not like doing any cooking. I'm just, I have no life other than these books and I need to stop. Yeah, I get like that. I I'm, I have to, I have to have that discipline. Like, okay, I, I will do a load of laundry and then I will allow myself to read after I've done these things. Um, it's uh, not something that you can do in the small chunks either. Like, no. you can't just go, oh, if I do this, I can allow myself one M&M. &M. It's no, no, if I do this, do I get to read a page? But then the page could end on like half of a sentence. And you're like, well, I need to read the chapter. But then the chapter leads into the next chapter. You're not going to watch, oh, I'm going to watch five minutes of a movie as a reward. Yeah. You're going to well, want to watch the whole movie. At least Tracy's chapters are good and short. That's one thing I really like is that they're nice and short. It doesn't take very long to get through one, and then you can stop. I have to stop yeah. at a chapter. I can't. I cannot just stop in the middle of a chapter. It's that's <laughs> that's terrorism. That's that's. that's <laughs> <laughs> um, and 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 the great thing that you noted here is that everything that we've read over the, like the last how many episodes has it been the same day in uh, Crave? I think it's three, four. Three or four Let episodes because the chandelier, the, that was the same, that was like, yeah, Grace woke up, realized that creatures are real. That was the same day that the chandelier fell on her. When she woke up, right? She woke up, she went down. That was episode 12. And we're on episode 15. <laughs> like, it is, you said 83 pages since the chandelier accident. 
it is still the same day. I asked this question <laughs> to our, our listeners, um, like when we first started the podcast, I said, it's in our quizzes section on the Crave Series Aesthetic Instagram. How long, like over what time period does the first book take place? It takes place in a week. <laughs> It's a week. Yep. Crave yep. is a week. She, she, she falls irrevocably in love in a week. In, in a less w- than a week. In one week. I mean, my book my book also takes place in a week, but my character is like, you know, things are going a little too fast. Like, she at least acknowledges how how toxic it is to, to fall in love so fast. Grace is all in. She's like, yeah, bite and drain <laughs> me. Like, I will you. let him do whatever he will to me. Like... Girl, <laughs> like slow it down a pace. You do you, yeah. but well, that, um, that was the whole chapter was that she was just walking, and then all of a sudden, Flint suddenly decides to join her and Mackay. Just jumps out of nowhere. Um, just <laughs> jump, like yeah, and she she confronts him. She's been ruminating about the how she was going to confront him and talk about it if he if he pushed her, and um, she she does it in quite an assertive way. As well, I was quite, I was quite proud of her. Good, yeah. yeah. For such a like little washy wishy washy character, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, she's. Um, and uh, yeah, your notes. <laughs> she she said, "Aren't your... you the one who's been trying to kill me since I got here?" And then he says, "It's not for the reasons you think. If you would just trust me, what reasons? What reasons would she think? <laughs> like why? Oh, it's don't. Yeah, I was trying to kill you, but don't worry. It's not for the reasons you think." Like, don't worry, it's, it's for the right reasons. Yeah. Just trust me, trust me. Just let me kill you and everything will be fine. <laughs> like, oh my God, at least she acknowledges it. At least she's like, why the hell would I trust you after this? <laughs> um, but then, yeah, uh, Flint says to Mekai, don't leave her, her or don't leave her alone. But I interpret that as don't let Leah kill her before I get the chance to, like... <laughs> yeah um that and whole I, I i um i love just the interaction with him and mekai as well it was just absolute racism <laughs> oh they were they were like yeah it was it was racism on the on the creature scale oh we yeah. the, talking talking smack about dragons and talking smack about the vamps like I, I like that fantasy tension, though, because I feel like we would not be able to, like, read it in any other context and it be okay. Like, if we read it in any other context, mm-hmm. we would be – everyone would be uncomfortable. I would be uncomfortable. I certainly know that, um, you know, listeners of, like, an ethnicity – being targeted would be uncomfortable but when it comes to like dragons and vampires it gives us the the chance to see these factions clash and then it gives us the chance later to see how they grow past it and realize like oh we're not so different and that's where i love the series and where it is right now where it's left off and i'll i won't go into spoilers but I love how everyone just becomes so close. It's it, it's a really satisfying place for these characters that you love to end up where they are able to put those differences aside. But yeah, I was I was laughing at the dragon. <laughs> Get your hands off her dragon boy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. Yeah. So then eventually they 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 leave Flint and Mackay is walking Grace to art class because apparently she needs security guards. Uh, she, and um he says nearly killed and killed are two very different things here. And I was like, "Wait, does that mean that there'll be no retribution for Flint like attempting murder?" And and I went, "Hold on a hot damn minute. Jackson's a murderer freely walking around. Everyone knows he killed his brother." And I'm like, He's going to school. How many other people have killed other people? Is it just a is it just a school full of murderers and everyone's okay with that? What's there what's the punishment? They get like, all right, Mr. Montgomery, go to the office. Like <laughs> like it like, I I I know that in my head I knew that as the truth, but I didn't register it until I read that line and I went, wait. Jackson is a known killer <laughs> of his brother and he's, fi- and he's fine yeah 
He's okay. He can go to school and he can mingle. He can mingle. He can date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so this this caught me off guard. Um, it's brought up that the, the shifters want to take away the one thing that's important to Jackson. But why do the shifters want to hurt Jackson is payback for ha- what happened with Hudson when Jackson is the one who killed Hudson. It's like the shifters are lost up- Hudson. Yeah, the, the, well, the shifters are upset that Hudson was trying to, like, work with his parents, eliminate the other races, uh, eliminate the unpure vampires, blah, 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 blah. But the shifters, is it just like a, a, a racism against the vampires? Like, they don't care. They're like, oh, you killed Hudson, but you're still one of them. Like, is that? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't understand it either. But, I, like, I think that there was a point where where Mekai says that he reckons that they're trying to harm him by taking away something that he loves. And it's only now where they realize that she could be someone that she loves. And like, you could kill any of the order and he would go mental. Oh yeah, absolutely. But maybe, maybe it needed to be someone more important. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that with the, if everybody is aware of the mating bond that, you know, it's i'm sure that since that's a normal thing like grace seems to be the only one unaware of the mating bond right now because she doesn't know that that's a thing um yeah she's just she's just like still saying boyfriend question mark um but <laughs> i'm i'm assuming the whole school knows if this is like what happens when creatures fall in love um it's not like with a court of thorns and roses where you can be with somebody in the mating bond not snap into place it seems to be kind of like an instantaneous you fall in love and bam like yeah i also um started reading um so i've read mist and fury and i've then just started the third book again i can't remember which one it was in but they talk about how you can also reject a mating bond yeah wings of um, ruin yeah and uh, it said that the man will always be slightly just empty and always looking for the woman whereas the woman can move on (laughs) hell yeah (laughs) we are strong independent women and we don't need no man man. meanwhile jackson is up in his room just working out lifting weights (laughs) which i mean that's punched i punched a wall because i love you too much (laughs) oh no um my so i have two least favorite lines ever (laughs) <laughs> from from these chapters yeah. the first one is um he pats my head like i'm a prize winning chihuahua <laughs> which okay <laughs> this is this is funny for multiple reasons for one amber and i are both equally as we are the same height and we are as tall as grace we are both five yep. two and so apparently we are as tall as prize winning chihuahuas um and we have the accurate boobage and bummage yeah or subumference as Sur- i like to call it. Surbumf- <laughs> that sounds like a title. That sounds. I am Sir Bumference. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Bumference and Radius. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, I've got another really bad line. I'll be- make sure to uh bring that up in a minute. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then yeah, Mecca was literally told by Flint not to leave Grace alone with anybody by Flint. And then two minutes later, he's like, oh, Leah, take Grace to class. You're safe. You're safe. And after she speed walks, which I'm just... Pa- hey, she's she's like <laughs> running towards him. And he's like, oh, I don't I don't need to be afraid of this. I don't need to be, be on alert. Apparently running full speed at me is completely normal. I need to finish painting my picture of Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> it's like talking of painting. <laughs> oh... So then, um, yeah, I thought that that was where we were going to leave it. But then you said the dress. And I was like, wait, w- dress wasn't mentioned. And then I had to obviously turn the page and start the next chapter. And we were in Macy's room. And apparently we're getting ready for this date because Jackson says that he wants to show her something. Yeah, well, you know, I didn't. I, I If if we would have ended our reading session there, it would have been a really boring episode because it was all just walking and talking <laughs> yeah. and walking yeah, and would've. talking. Yeah, I, we had to get to the Northern Lights scene. Um, so first of all, the dress. I have a little, a little bit of beef here with um, 
bookish box because their special editions that they uh, did the pre-orders for, which unfortunately those are sold out. Um, I know Amber's very sad, sad because they were sold out before she got into the series. But <laughs> Grace is in the red dress on the cover. I will oh, flash. No. I'm going to flash the picture on the screen for our YouTube viewers. But yeah, they put her in the red dress. I'm like, she didn't wear the red dress. She wore the yellow she dress. She wanted to. She, she, put, she, no, she didn't actually. No, she was too uncomfortable. She didn't want that one. So yeah. Um, and then my, she went for a yellow summer dress in Alaska. I am, I pictured it like a silk, like a gold silk, like still clingy. I can't imagine but... anything, anything nice in yellow. Yellow is my least favorite color. Oh, I like I like mustard yellow though. So that's different than like a a bright bright yellow. Um, least favorite line of the entire book though. I I. I I read it and I had to like stop and put the bookmark in and just take a minute, like for me. And it wasn't just the line either; it was the whole like paragraph. Yeah, yeah. She Macy Macy just she's she was she was too much. I love I love Macy so much, but she was <laughs> too much. She said, "Uh, that gorgeous bite mark he left on you, swoon like yeah. that that gorgeous." Oh, that gorgeous bite mark. I that that gorgeous hickey on your neck. That gorgeous Yum. that gorgeous gouge on on your neck. Like I, I don't know, that combination of words. I just my brain is like gorgeous is not is that I I, I, I my brain, see, I, I'm I'm my brain is flatlining right now. I can't it's, right. Say it's yours is flatlining but, too. I can sense it. <laughs> I'm trying to say things in a very PC way. Um, so there is definite kink with between between boys and girls of like bites and love bites and hickeys and things like that. Oh yeah, no kink the, shaming, no kink yeah. shaming at you all. Can look, you can look in the mirror and you go, "Oh, that's hot!" Like that's hot because like my man put a mark on me. But a friend doesn't think it's hot, <laughs> right? A friend saying, "Oh, that's gorgeous." That's what's weird. Yeah, if you're wearing it on yourself and it's like that reminder, that's a to that's a whole different thing. But your cousin, your cousin is like, <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous. I I'm like, oh god, no, Macy, Macy, stop. I don't, I don't want to yeah, have grim. that conversation with any of my family members. No, yeah. me neither. I mean, I would be pretty embarrassed if they saw any of the bruises that I was left with. Because it's very obvious. <laughs> Those are gorgeous, Amber. Gorgeous. Mm. I love that um, slut stamp. That's on your bum. Like, <laughs> no, from don't from, be don't be looking from the from the flogging that you just received. <laughs> <laughs> like oh. you don't mention it. Like you can see it and you can have a little smirk to yourself. You definitely don't think it's gorgeous, but you definitely don't mention it. No, the so if you want it's that, supposed to that's be a where, secret thing. That's where you where that's where you like get one of the day collars that you wear around where somebody who's in mm -hmm. into it they can recognize it and they're like, "Oh, I I get that." But, you know, it most people are just like, "Oh, you know, that's that's a cute necklace." <laughs> they must got. really like cats. <laughs> yeah, right? They that's that's very cute. How al how alternative of them. Yeah. The thing is, Grace didn't really. Um, so she's clearly not. I, what? I, there must be a word for it because every kink and every every fetish has a name, and I'm just a bit behind the times with some of them. But um, yeah, that she didn't seem to be reciprocative when when Macy was teasing her or, or talking about it. Um, she she genuinely did feel teased. It, it wasn't something that she was enjoying, and I'm like, why didn't you hide it then what the the bite mark or yeah she was like if you didn't want macy to keep making jokes about it then why didn't you cover it up i mean if it's on her neck i guess if she doesn't want to walk around with like i'm i'm picturing it like higher like on the neck it would be hard probably hard to hide if it's because well, i don't know because she literally just had one from the hospital <laughs> how many does she have now too, but she covered the one up from the hospital because shame, but not from her partner. And then she's about to get another one. Uh huh. Does, does he bite do the same spot? He to, uh, yeah, do you reckon he made like aligns the holes? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I. And and the last the last one. I mean, we're not to that point yet, but I didn't make a note of it, and I'm gonna forget. 
She said something about he bit her throat. No, not the throat. That's not where you bite. Don't don't ever bite the throat. That's not <laughs> even even playfully like kink lesson one hundred and one. You gonna die. Yeah, don't don't bite the the throat. That's not it's a like place. If you're doing choke, if you're doing breath play and you're choking, don't, don't, don't not the it. not the jugular. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um. I, I even wrote it as well. So uh, Macy leans in to do. To, I can't remember whether like to give her a necklace or something, or to help earrings. with her hair and she, earrings. Earrings, yes. And she says you smell good enough to eat. And I'm like, firstly, that's a bit, it's a bit weird of a cousin to say that. Um, but then Macy is bi, so I suppose like. But that's her cousin. That wouldn't. Yeah, but it wouldn't be too abnormal for her to say that to another another female. Like I I say that to my male best friends. Like oh my god, you smell really good. You know, maybe but, um, like if I said to a girl, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, oh, you're good enough to eat. It would be, oh, I love your perfume. What are you wearing? Yeah, there's there's certain there's you there's a minefield. It was a very but Alice anyway. Alice from Twilight <laughs> line. Yeah, um, but then I was like, do you think that like vampires also get that like <laughs> taste when they lick perfume? Yeah, <laughs> because it's all it's all on everybody's necks. Yeah. It's- <laughs> Oh, it's tainted, rad. <laughs> so it is like oh, you would you would go to bite, and then you would get that like you know that perfume on your lips, and you can't seem to get rid of that bitter yeah, taste for the rest of the day. Yeah, <laughs> I can just imagine Jackson like, mm, oh, <laughs> oh. I love how he wrote it as well because I was like, I needed I needed to get that like, um, it's it's onomatopoeia, isn't it? Where it's the yes. the word that describes the sound, and I was like, just went p p f f e e r r r r p f. That was great, great spelling. That's how I would have spelled. Yep. <laughs> um. So <laughs> Chris goes to Jackson's room. First of all, he's wearing like a light blue cashmere sweater and ripped up blue jeans, and I'm like, all right, <laughs> I, I'm all right with this boyfriend he- material. Yeah, that's 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 better better than i mean not that not that the gucci thing wasn't nice but it's getting old um it's it's, it's no Armani. It's yeah no Armani. oh no 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 that's we'll save we'll save that that's that's reserved um <laughs> but uh so they go and they do all the northern lights thing you know that's everybody's favorite scene i don't have a whole lot of commentary here because they're you know for it being everyone's favorite scene, there wasn't a whole lot of descriptiveness going on. Like, they didn't have a lot of dialogue during it. She just described them as dancing in the Northern Lights for, like, an hour, I think she said. Um, but I, I did want to point out that if you guys play the Crave uh, game on Chapters, I went through this scene and you had to pay, like, actual money to uh, tell Jackson that you wanted to stay in the Northern Lights or you could choose the free option, which was to tell Jackson to put you back down. You were too scared. And for the second that we went up in the Northern Lights, I, I made Grace tell Jackson to put her down because she was too scared. And we went back inside. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. It didn't change. I, I imagined that entire scene to be like the dance scene at the end of Twilight movie with like the really rubbish emo music that now I've found. <laughs> I love that song. That's by like Iron really, and Wine. But like really slow. Like yeah. Really, really slow, but for way too long. <laughs> and you're like, okay, we get it. We get it. You're dancing. Okay. Like if, 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 can you imagine being in the grounds of Catmare and just looking up and seeing like <laughs> blimpy little Jacks? <laughs> and Grace just with a blanket completely wrapped around her. <laughs> Just doing like little spin. They'd look like a Dementor. <laughs> she's a big red one. She's. I imagined her more like burritoed in there. She's. <laughs> Grace, do you need help? Uh, Are you okay uh, up there? Oh God! Now I found you. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I did some. Uh, I'm crying. I'll, I'll, I'll just send you. I did. I did a, a little. Um, I used to have a, a Twilight Instagram similar to the Crave page, and I quit posting to it. But I did a, um, <laughs> I did a thing. It was um, the "Now I'm a Fat House Cat" line of um, "Flightless Bird" by Iron and Wine, and it, I did like I tried to do the uh, the 
patio, the gazebo, where Edward and Bella dance with the lights overhead. Because I always thought that mm. scene was very pretty, especially since they didn't use the blue filter. It stood out. Um, but I did. I made that like gazebo. But then I put a big fat cat in the middle of it. <laughs> I don't know. You were Twilight it... shit posting before Twilight shit posting was the thing. I did. I did. I'll. I'll. I'll have to show it to you. It's funny. Um, but uh, anyway, so they go inside, and this is another scene that I just I laughed so hard. My husband looked at me, and he's like, "What?" And I had to read it to him. Uh, Grace said, "I slide my hands into the back pockets of his jeans and revel in the way he shudders at my touch." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, Jackson likes his butt touched." <laughs> <laughs> like he shudders when she slides her hands into the back pockets of his jeans. Like maybe because he's like you're freezing. Stop touching me. <laughs> don't don't touch my butt. <laughs> maybe it was maybe it was in disgust. <laughs> don't don't touch my butt. <laughs> don't touch don't touch my butt. Don't touch my butt. <laughs> butt um. stuff is gay. <laughs> <laughs> Just like actually, he realizes that he's like proper ta- toxic masculinity. <laughs> and he's just completely homophobic, and we've ruined everything that we've ever dreamed for him. Oh no. No, Jackson. <laughs> he doesn't like his butt touch. <laughs> Jackson and Flint will be a thing. Damn it, they will be he a thing. He likes his butt touched, guys. I will riot. He likes his butt touched. I will riot if Jackson and Flint are not a thing by the end of court. Mark <laughs> my words, Tracy. I know. Have, I know you're. They can out have their there. own dance scene. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It's going to get be... worse and worse, my singing. And then, and then, and then Flint can fly them up and Jackson can float and it'll be beautiful. <laughs> I want, I want it so bad. I, that is like my number one goal. I don't care how the rest of court, <laughs> of court goes. I mean, I, as long as Grace and Hudson don't have a baby, I talked about that in the last episode. I'm so sick of my fantasy couples from books ending up with babies not everybody needs to have a baby. <laughs> Not everybody wants to have a baby. Stop making that the thing that they have to aspire towards. Oh, let's get married and have a baby. Like, that's not end goal. Like, do something. No. G- give them something else. I I promise everybody who actually reads my book, main character is not having a baby. That's She's I, not having a happy ending. <laughs> not, I mean, it, it might be a happy ending, but it ain't going to be no baby. No, I have a kid. I love my kid. Is she going to have an egg? Yeah, my character is going to have an egg. <laughs> I really, um, I'm really like imagining this scene with Jackson and Flint. <laughs> and Flint is wearing a duvet too. <laughs> I want them, I want them like dragon duvet. I want them incubating their little, their egg together. Like they adopt an egg and yes. I just want Jackson and Flint like arm arm over each other like just watching their little egg like as it's sh- like trembling about to hatch and yes this yeah we need th- some um some tweak and craig-esque artwork can we of them please someone give me this fanfic right now i'm ready for <laughs> it i i am so ready we will read it on the podcast yes give me will. give me the flint and and jackson Flaxen, flaxen hair. Yes, the flaxen. I want it. Um, <laughs> so here's a little a little tidbit. Um, for those who don't know, I, I actually used to be a jewelry designer. You can still find my work by searching Art by Starla Moore. Um, but I created fantasy themed skeleton keys for a long, long time, almost nine years. Um, and I quit doing it because I got too busy. But uh, yeah, so when Grace receives the Mystic Topaz from Jackson, I did a little bit of pricing today. <laughs> <laughs> and a mystic toe did you actually yes i did a mystic topaz <laughs> from a big jewelry store is going to run you around three hundred dollars however yeah. um there is a prettier stone that has the exact same look about it called a vitral medium it is spelled v-i-t-r-a-i-l medium um look up that stone if you can get your hands on a swarovski crystal vitral medium you're gonna pay a couple dollars for it it is a real crystal and it is the exact same colors um they are very pretty so if you want your own jackson crystal necklace you can get a vitral medium crystal for pretty cheap i I would recommend hopping on etsy and finding a small artist to support um also because i'm an etsy coach so 
obviously. But yeah, um, if you want your own Jackson necklace and you don't want to pay an insane amount of money for it, which, you know, $300 isn't that much for as much money as Jackson has. And when Grace is like, it probably costs more than my whole outfit. And I'm like, I mean, I, I guess $300 is a lot for an outfit. I'm like looking at my outfit right now, trying to decide how much my outfit costs. <laughs> My you're only allowed to buy it, though. Um, you're only allowed to get those stones and make a pendant if you're never to speak of them ever again. Exactly, yeah. Because she says, I never want to take it off. And then we never hear about it ever again. <laughs> ever. Where Where is this necklace? I don't know, but I, I have a fan theory that it's with her phone. Because she comes back and she, she can't find a phone either. But that's heading into spoiler territory. Ooh, maybe maybe since she was wearing it when she went into yeah into gargoyle land, we'll just leave it at that. Maybe it like it's it, still there. It's it, on the dresser because she hated it. Yeah, it's just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, I can't wait to get this thing off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Um, so Jackson just conveniently he like has some hot tea ready. He's like, here, Grace, have some tea. Leah dropped it off. Yeah. No. Yeah, because they had they had a whole conversation where um, Grace is trying to appeal to Leah's sort of humanity and says that she should try and make amends with Jackson because Jackson misses her. Mm. So all of a sudden, she has dropped off her special blend of tea. If, if there's special in it, it's either got weed in it or it's going to poison you. <laughs> like... Like I, I, I just that's 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 just how it is. I mean, so for, nobody wants that special K cereal. That's ketamine. Yeah, no special K. That's <laughs> <laughs> for any countries who don't know what special. And K I mean, is. I I even noticed when she was describing the way that the tea tasted, she could identify certain flavors. And knowing that Grace was brought up on tea, her mum making tea, she was able to identify certain flavors. And she wasn't able to identify what was in this tea, which immediately is suspicious. Um, and she says this tea tastes spicier than the one that she had before. And I'm like, hmm. Spicier. What could it be, though? What What did she... Pepper. Pepper. Bleach. Mm, love a bit of that habanero tea. Tide Pods. Bleach. <laughs> <laughs> just one time I didn't quite register each. that <laughs> i love you know i love me i love me a nice tide pod tea in the morning i like the um the uh the free and clear ones that don't have the parabens yeah. and dyes yeah oh yeah i like the beads delicious mm. Mm -mm -mm, the little be little beads the oh. little, little pearl beads that you put in there mm. oh yeah the downy unstoppable on them with some milk <laughs> mm. eat it like cereal delicious yum 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 children please don't uh please don't eat tide pods we uh us us you know for for all the little ones listening i all th three of you i'm sure that there is at least a couple um a couple children listening to the podcast uh um um it makes it very hard for adults to um get tide pods that we can open I am unable to open the <laughs> childproof locks that they yes, now require. Not, <laughs> not you will kill yourself. You're making my life difficult. You're Come making on, guys. you're making my life difficult. I cannot get my Tide Pods open. I just need to wash my <laughs> towels. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we, I, I, we never had that issue in the UK. Uh, we were just sat here laughing <laughs> because y'all are smarter. <laughs> our kids our kids i swear there's something there's Stop something in the water fabric soft <laughs> i anytime i've had people ask me they're like oh starla you look so young what's your skincare routine and i'm like i rub a dryer sheet on my face every morning to remove my wrinkles and then i yes. <laughs> i eat one pine cone every afternoon it does wonders for my digestive system um oh I wonder how many people have actually tried to <laughs> Like, they might say no to the pine cone idea and go, no, she, that was a joke. <laughs> they might genuinely try the dryer sheet. The Thank thing is, I don't think serious? it... To eat like a Tide Pod will kill you. Rubbing a dryer sheet on your face will probably just make you smell that's good. Just, that's just funny. So, um, <laughs> And it's a waste of a dryer sheet. It is. 
It is. It's that's very wasteful, guys. Don't waste your dryer sheets on Speaking of wasteful. Yeah, for real, Grace. <laughs> Grace only drinks half her tea and then lets Jackson drink it out of her anyway. <laughs> Jackson so drains tea. his tea though. He like he he good old college chugs that tea. So like so he can't eat strawberries but he can drink tea. Apparently, yes. Okay, so it's just solid. He's a baby. So yeah. We gave him like puree. Some like maybe is it like applesauce or like do you have mushy peas? Yeah. I mean, we don't eat them. Mushy babies peas. do. <laughs> No, we have them with chips. Ew, Fish, no. chips, and mushy peas. No. I can't think of anything worse than mushy peas, but people love them. What? What's the line? Can Can he have ketchup? Can he have applesauce? <laughs> can If he took the strawberry and pureed it, could he eat that? I want to know the where the tea, I mean, tea, ice cream. Ice cream that melts into a into a liquid. Hmm. I have questions. Yeah, what is the line? <laughs> yeah. But apparently apparently tea is is fine and he he guzzles unless it's unless it's made by Leah apparently because all of a sudden Jackson bites her they're having a lovely horny time and then he's like get away from me. Nom 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 run. Yeah. <laughs> and then and Grace compares Evil Jackson to a B movie vampire honey that don't make him scarier it google makes him less scary b movie <laughs> than vampire. He was before yeah I- i'm gonna i will just suck your blood oh, oh, oh. yeah that's like i'm i'm picturing no. like i i don't know I- i'll i'll flash it doesn't like... make him scarier it makes him less sexy yeah like i've never watched a b movie and been like oh yeah like b movies that's Ooh, give it to me daddy that's the cheesiest of the cheesy you watch that stuff so you can laugh not be scary give it to me Draki. <laughs> yeah what's what's your favorite b movie um bubba the wedneck werewolf that was pretty funny that doesn't even sound um, like a movie house shark was hilarious um I actually have a bingo sheet that me and my friend follow <laughs> for really, really terrible movies. And um, yeah, we get we get to tick it when like we see boobs within first five minutes, when the cast <laughs> is less than 12 members, um, when the monster cannot be in the same shot as the uh, the rest of the cast because the CGI <laughs> isn't that good. Things like that. But yeah, uh, so, yeah, House Shark was amazing. I think that... Uh... I, I think that Black Sheep is still my favorite just because there was effort <laughs> made. Like, I can feel yeah. the effort. They really did try, but it's a big, it's a killer sheep. Like, and, and Rubber <laughs> is another one where they did a great job. Like, in, in terms of production quality, Rubber was a great movie. But when you try to explain to someone that you, there's a horror movie with a killer tire, it's, Yeah. Me, um, me and my husband definitely Netflix and chilled through that movie. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah, like I remember the beginning and yeah. I remember the end because I'm yep, pretty sure we were me drunk. Too. Uh, <laughs> I was not drunk. <laughs> you were. Ch- you were chilling. I was, I was occupied. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and th- there have been some a few other ones. Velocipasta was incredible. <laughs> I've got, that one's on Netflix, I think, or Hulu. I, I, I just saw <laughs> it was that recently. Amazing. Um, um amanda jedi um reviews it as well it's, oh does she i'm gonna watch ama- that she's yeah it's amazing <laughs> i just uh yeah i just sat and watched her because i haven't read or watched the 365 days that everybody keeps raving about and i watched oh my her god, it's so bad oh my god i just i just spilled water all over myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's how bad it was um i was in a hurry to unmute myself <laughs> just forgot <laughs> um so here's my question like okay first first of all this is the only part in crave where i was actually shocked uh and and that's when (laughs) leah pulls out a gun out of nowhere and shoots jackson (laughs) like i i was not expecting that at all nothing else has surprised me until that very moment and first of all where did this where did this i'm assuming 17 year old girl acquire a gun why does a vampire need a gun what what and why would the gun be any more of a a effective than any other method of killing him yeah i and and 
I mean, what what type of gun was it? Like, I and I'm only asking is, you know, just curiosity for the sake of the film. If we get it, what type of gun are we? Are we talking like a little like a pea shooter? She just pops him with a pea shooter. Pew. It's spud gun. <laughs> yeah, or or is this sucker like? Does she pull out like a machine gun and Rambo him? He's <laughs> bah, 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 and his like body is just boom boom like f- flailing from side I to side. I think that that's going to be really strange to see i think that like if if it was in a movie we'd be like wait what yeah it's gonna throw the whole the whole oh now the monsters have guns <laughs> like <laughs> um she also said that she should have made the tea stronger but jackson was already like murderous rage vampire like what was her aim for the tea for him like what escalation could that have done I feel like she wanted it to kill him and disable oh. Grace to the point where she couldn't run away so she could carry her down. But she almost got her wish. All she needed to have done was uh, let Jackson drink the rest of Grace. Well, they did, she didn't want Grace dead. She doesn't want Grace dead. You, you want to go into yeah, spoilers so we can... Yeah, doesn't suddenly kill her. Let, let's go into spoilers so we can, uh, so we can dive more Ooh. into this. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think that she wanted Grace just half dead. That way she would be easier to go tie down to the, the stone table, but still be alive enough that it would help, you know, whatever crazy psycho. Well, yeah. And, and we also know that nearly killed is not the same as killed. So. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she, <laughs> she just didn't want to get expelled yet. No. Uh, Stupid okay. rule. Get, she doesn't want to get detention. <laughs> just like, do you reckon it's in like the school rule book? You know, what do you do? Like dress code. Um, like students should always maintain like decorum outside classes. Any humans that come into the school, we should look after them. Nearly killed is not the same as killed. <laughs> Art classes. <laughs> you must take one, like, one segued language. into the middle of all of the rules. And you're like, wait, what? What was that last one? You're like, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Don't worry about that. It wasn't important. Yeah. Um. So, uh, more more on spoiler topics. Um. Yeah, Heather got mentioned in this one. Uh, right at the beginning, where Grace sends her a text, and she takes the picture. She sends her a picture of herself in her costume for like drama class or something. Like poor Heather. Yeah, I, f- I feel bad for Heather. We we don't get very much, Heather. I mean, no. I I think I think it's gonna fizzle out. And I mean, as much as you can say like no, because like you can have like long distance relationships and things like that. Yes, yes, you can. But at this point, their lifestyles are so different now. It's not just the distance; it's the fact that Grace will have to keep this secret. She can't just tell her oh by the way i'm a gargoyle and my partner is a vampire i keep saying partner their boyfriend their their husbands i mean they're mated <laughs> my mate yeah as soon as you say that to any human they'd be like um down with the patriarchy <laughs> but like there's the whole new like secret world forms such a big part of her life and heather can't be a part of that heather's a muggle yeah so as far as we know as far as we know heather might come back with a vengeance as and her pincers with heather wear crab in clap, in clap, court clap, clap, clap. <laughs> yeah um i i think that heather is I, I think that she was used as a plot device to show grace fully distancing herself from the human world. I think that she was used as a representation of Grace letting go, even though it's hard, even though it's painful. It just wasn't done, you know, very consistently because we only get little bits and pieces. Um, But Heather was supposed to come to Catmere Academy and then Grace ended up having to cancel her trip and then Heather stopped talking to her uh, in Covet after grace canceled Do you think on her that was like an invite from grace but it wasn't necessarily an like uh it was it was like a ask for forgiveness rather than permission thing for uncle finn that like he wouldn't have allowed a human into the school but grace didn't know that visitations from humans would have been an issue 
Yeah. Well, I don't like he like she gets warned within three seconds of being in that school by Jackson. Like everything here is here to kill you. They wouldn't be able to have a safe interaction with Heather at the school. No. No, and, so she would she would have never been allowed in the school. But I think that that was something that Grace would have just like, yeah, you can come visit. Yeah, I, and I, it would have been a better way to go if she would have just been like, hey, headmaster says that you can't come. I'm sorry, I didn't think it was going to be an issue. And obviously, I mean, they could have met and, and stayed in uh, what's the other town, Healy, because we got that in the yes, we got a town within like you know walking flying distance. In the uh, bonus novella, from Hudson's perspective, in the Guide to Catmere Academy, there was a town that they were walking through. They couldn't, they couldn't, um, they couldn't fade to back to school because they would have been seen. They had to walk part of the way, which means that there was a town there with people. I'm sure there was a hotel. They could have just stayed there. I don't know. I I don't feel like Grace is putting very much effort into the friendship she's not <laughs> like she's not like she's not gossiping with her at all it's i mean there there is so much that she still could tell heather but she's just not because maybe she's afraid of further questions yeah i mean she could say that she has a boyfriend oh my boyfriend is the most popular guy in school he's an emo kid he likes my chemical romance like that's enough <laughs> uh, um so my my next my, <laughs> my next point was that Flint refers to the man that he loves as, as a tick. <laughs> that sounds uh well you That's know ticks. So mean. That, well you know ticks ticks Maybe are like that's his kink. Yeah, ticks bite. Do you think? Do you think that like that's part of some of their like fantasies? It's like if you if you find someone attractive, you find like the way that they play their guitar is fancy, and you're like, oh yeah. I love the way that you move those fingers over that neck. But actually, it's like, <laughs> yeah, bite me. <laughs> I love the way that you sit there and turn the pages in that book. You go all you on them. Not you like you. you I was like, like, wait, what? <laughs> you like, um, you uh, like, you, yeah. you like Joe. A stalkery. Yeah. Yeah, like stalker you where you just observe like all their little things. Yeah. Every once in a while my husband will look at me and he'll just be like, You're so cute. And I'm sitting there like looking like a freaking slob reading my like book with my chin. My gut hanging over my pajama pants. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, what? And he's like, You're cute. You're reading. I'm like, Oh. <laughs> I don't feel very cute. Yeah. No. And if we came across our husbands in exactly the same pose, we'd be like, Ugh. Oh, you got chips all over their shirts. <laughs> <laughs> belching there was a there was a point i took a picture of um pixel the the my corgi he was um upside down sleeping like just complete like everything was out like <laughs> it was just and scott said how would you feel if if you walked in and i was in that same pose just <laughs> completely <laughs> upside down everything was out and just on my stomach and i was like yeah i don't think that i would think it's it was as cute um <laughs> no <laughs> oh god um so um this is this is the first time that you've you've met you've mentioned that grace acknowledges the, the voice inside her head um and she refers to it as like sentient that it is it's thoughtful it has a thought process um which was interesting yeah she's suddenly aware of it yeah she said that it feels it doesn't feel like like a normal um like normal consciousness or um you know a, a part of her it feels like its own separate thing so this is this is the first time that she really acknowledges that the gargoyle in her is a thing i i think that this is going along with that theory that her mom gave her tea to keep you know her magic at bay and now it's been how many days we're going on like a week that well, it's been a it's been a month since her parents died, but then it's a week since she's been at Katmere. Yeah, so it's it's finally wearing off. Um, and she starts. This is where you know she's she's had little whispers of her gargoyle, but now she's actually acknowledging it. So I think that I think that we're right in our fan theory that her mom gave her tea to keep the gargoyle in her a secret. So that she could stay safe and separate from the magical world. Um, because I think that they made the deal with the blood letter 
to bond her to Jackson, but then ended up taking Grace away from the magical world to keep her safe. And I believe that Grace's mom was also a gargoyle, but they kept that a secret because Cyrus was killing all of the gargoyles. So I think that they wanted to keep her safe because they knew that she would be a gargoyle. So that's that's that is the hill that I'm standing on, and I will die on this hill. <laughs> yeah. So um, one of one of the comments was, oh, I think there are. I I'm not even sure how many of our notes are even in order anymore. I'm like, like, was this before or after the tunnel thing? But um, I said like, I wonder how much of the journey through the tunnels was referred to as calm because it was with Mackay, but how much was it because it was with Mackay? Like, was he doing his, like, Jasper emotions power, witchy woo-woo? When did they mention that? To keep her calm. Well, they don't. We still don't know that Mackay has that power. But it feels like tower, a fever in dream. The, in the, but in the tunnel... Yeah. Well, the thing is, I thought the same. I have thought the entire time you've been mentioning it, I'm like, maybe it's just something that I just haven't read yet or registered. But I don't remember anywhere where it says that he has like magical powers. No, I don't. I don't either. <laughs> Did you make it up? <laughs> I feel like I, I. I feel like it's a fever dream. But there keeps being like things where she mentions being insanely calm around him. Someone, someone yeah. should let us know. Like, is this something that I made up? I, Maybe I feel it's a power that Mackay isn't even aware of. Be just like a, a a subconscious thing, an unconscious ability to just read the room and and know who needs to be calm. I don't. I I might have made this up. My mind might have filled in some blanks. I feel like it though. Every time he's around, I mean, maybe he's just <laughs> world's best BFF. I mm -hmm. like him as a character. Maybe my brain was just like, oh yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I, I love how your note is his witchy woo woo. <laughs> that's, that's... I didn't know how to get, put the emphasis on like how much of it was because of Mekai and how much of it was because it was with Mekai. <laughs> yeah, because they they wrote exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. Um, then he and, starts uh, trash talking what... your boo. Yeah, he is trash talking my boo. But he's 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 talking about Hudson and he's saying that he's a light version of Jackson. And I was like, wait, like as in a cheery disposition? You you know it, you know it. He's super funny and he's super lovely and blah blah blah. blah. But then he's like, no, 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 no. I mean, like, as in light. Like, and I was like, wait. So I googled, and it's light means containing less of an ingredient. What a bastard! Yeah, like, like, how you dare know, you say that? You drink in a beer, you can either drink like, like, you can drink Budweiser, or you drink a Bud Light to sit like for the calorie. Yeah. Like, you know, you're on a diet. Now I'll just have a Bud Light. Like he's low cal Jackson. He's diet <laughs> diet <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> Oh, I'm so mad. <laughs> yeah, and then and then he goes even worse. He's like, being able to fool people into thinking you have character isn't the same as actually having character. Hudson wasn't a quarter of the person Jackson is. And I'm like, that's literally the opposite. Both <laughs> Jackson has yep. no personality compared to Hudson, who has all the personality. And Jackson is significantly less powerful than Hudson was. Mm -hmm. He is a shadow of what Hudson is. We're ready for the next book, guys. Can you tell? Can you tell that we're just <laughs> trying to get through Crave so we can get to Crush? Uh, yeah. Give me my boy. The boy. It's our boy. You already know who it is. It's Hudders. And uh, we we want that painting. Leah said that she was doing a painting of Hudson. Like, where where, where is this? Where's where is this that? painting? Can we have it? Can I we, want it. Can we have a copy? He's dead. Like, we can <laughs> frame it above the mantle. I would like it to be left in her will to me. Yes. Unless it's ugly. I mean, it could be one of those things where like, <laughs> everyone's like, wow, that's a pretty painting. And then you look at it and it's just awful. <laughs> we wouldn't even know whether it had like any likeness to it. <laughs> and the thing is, like, even Grace, when she was speaking about it, says, oh, yeah, no, he's really attractive <laughs> in front of Mackay. And I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> Leah's like, oh, well, the painting doesn't do it justice. I was like, oh, wow, okay, then I'm ready for seeing this painting now. But apparently, it, it, it like, imagine that, like, it would be absolutely Hudson's thing 
to have found that painting when he goes in like the mind of grace and he sees that it's just on the easel never finished and he's just like i'm gonna frame that takes it into his bedroom and puts it up <laughs> just as a joke uh and I, I i'm i'm there for it i want to get one of those like victorian style mantle paintings of my husband and myself for like above the fireplace <laughs> with us just not smiling at all you know because they could yeah they and could. you should get you should get issy and amy in the like the dog with like the renaissance kind of oh yeah like suit oh my god that would be amazing absolutely i'll uh, i'll know and that Bubba's. <laughs> Bubba, like all of every the whole family just with like bag like big victorian ruffs and like time pieces <laughs> absolutely over the fireplace statement piece yeah so um during the conversation with leah um grace is like oh she turns her face away from mine but i can tell she's biting her lip obviously trying not to cry and like <laughs> no like, no you idiot she's poking herself in the eye to make them water like a psychopath whilst not believing your luck that you've given her an easy target you're such a moron <laughs> yeah like oh I'm so sad. <laughs> and she's, do you reckon like when she's like biting her lip, do you reckon she's kind of like biting in a laugh? You know, like when she's like, what an idiot. <laughs> like yeah. she's doing that like method acting where she turns her head away suddenly because she's suddenly so distraught that she cannot look in your eyes. And and poor Grace, she's like hugging her. She's like, I don't want to let go. I always yeah. learn never to be the one to let go first. And Leah's, <laughs> and Leah's just like, <laughs> <laughs> evil bitch, Leah. <laughs> um, um, and I, I, I did put like, oh yeah, making plans isn't Jackson's modus operandi. And I said, yeah, bitch, what's yours? <laughs> Plot, roofy tea, and stab, <laughs> and shoot. <laughs> I was like, wow, she, she, she flips on a dime. She really does. Like we had our suspicions all along, but she went from like just pretending to be a friend to sudden psychopath yeah and you know reading it the first time it was like well she might be okay she might she's acting sketch like i but i really did think that they that she was meant to look sketchy and i was just like oh mm -hmm. you know they're just trying to make us think that she's sketchy no she's she was the bad guy all along yeah bitch <laughs> <laughs> the leah hater um, um and i love your comment like i i only i was like what why is this relevant you put it in the notes and i don't understand and then i was like oh yeah well first time reading it i thought it was a weird thing for macy to point out macy was like how do you stay so still i swear you're a statue it barely felt like you were breathing while i was putting that earring in and like first read through i was just like that's okay <laughs> second read through i'm just like oh it's the tea wearing Ooh. off Yep, and it would also explain how she's so good at art. And her artwork is, like, slowly getting better because she suddenly has a steady hand. <laughs> oh. Look at mm -hmm. you. Look at you figuring things out. Yeah. Well, you, like, you, can't, you cannot paint or draw when you've had, like, 16 cups of coffee and you've got all, like, shaky fingers. Um, But I was like, okay, she is the clumsiest person ever. And I'm wondering... How much of that is because she was drugged? And she's just been living her life drugged because she becomes yeah. quite coordinated in future books. Yeah, quite coordinated. And also she, being a, a gargoyle, she would have a low center of gravity. <laughs> yeah, I mean, can you imagine, like, I, I remember when I was pregnant. I mean, that was that was nine months to adjust from being one weight to being a tremendously heavier weight of a person and my balance was so bad i was i would bump myself against things knock into doors because i wasn't used to it because it happened mm -hmm. so fast but with grace it's like a, it's gonna be an overnight thing where one day she's just like bam you're a gargoyle yeah. now she's suddenly coordinated and can actually navigate her world i mean then again she does struggle to fly <laughs> but wouldn't you i mean it's kind of like um a court of, court of winds and ruins when she's learning to fly and she she speaks about the how there's like that fear as an adult you have that fear of falling whereas as a child you don't have those apprehensions because you've never fallen that hard 
Yeah, it's children bounce. Module one of Handmade Alpha Academy. It's, <laughs> you've, it's you've you build that. Um, it is the reprogramming of your brain. Your brain has to either fail for your neural patterns to change, or it needs to see someone fail at it. So, for example, you might not personally stick your finger in a light socket and feel yourself get zapped and know not to do it, but you could watch a younger sibling do it and then see them freak out and realize, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Same as like I like watching Final Destination movies and then not like driving behind a logging truck. <laughs> like there's, I, I mean, it, you see it once and then it is forever a part of your yeah. brain. Yeah. I um, I refuse to do anything too exertive like running wise. And I don't like, I know people say like, oh, this is because you're just not very active. I'm like, no, I genuinely have a fear of falling and breaking my arm. Because every time I have broken my arm or sprained my wrist or hurt myself, it is being during doing strenuous exercise or running or like running backwards. That was how I broke my wrist the first time. Um, and the fear of heights is the inability to control my own body. It is that uh, I don't trust that I am coordinated enough to stop myself from falling or stop myself from hurting myself. So that is an absolute understand. Like I, I completely understand when somebody says that they're they're afraid to ride a horse, and I'm like, yeah, because it hurts when you fall off. Like really bloody hurts. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm I I still now to this day like I get like that phantom pain in my wrist, and I'm like, if I break my wrist, I have to take like eight weeks off of work, and that's not just a oh, I, I get to have eight weeks not at my job. It's, I, I lose eight weeks of my livelihood. I lose eight weeks of my absolute pride and joy of my business. Yeah, because Amber is a and, business owner and she draws yeah, for a living for those who don't I know. I literally couldn't do it for eight weeks. And then even then, once they've got the cast off, it's not like a sudden, oh, I can now use my arm again. It, it, it becomes a training process to train your muscles and your uh, tendons and your ligaments to make those movements again. And... I, there, there is some mental block there that whenever I go to run, I am afraid of pushing myself too hard in case I fall over. <laughs> yeah. Talking of fear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Grace is apparently, she says that she's not afraid of heights. And I'm like, that's because she can fly. In my, in my Crave game, I did make her afraid of heights, though. Put me back down, Jackson. Did you? You put me down this instant. <laughs> sorry sorry if you ruined the romantic night and the northern lights and stuff yeah um the blimp <laughs> yeah the blimp just they, as, just as, when you start it's like oh um i don't i'm not flying we're floating and i just snorted i was like <laughs> blimp blimp like, uh, and then like she said blimp. this is a ride of a lifetime and i was like mm -hmm, you wait until you get hudson <laughs> <laughs> ride grace ride yeah yeah oh god yeah so those those are all of our spoiler po uh, topics should we move on to our fan polling questions did you set did you set them up i, I did and we got so many oh. responses because i did it hours ago rather than waiting oh. right before um okay so she's ahead of the game ahead of the game today i'm motivated um okay so first question was um if, speaking of which the, the reason that i'm motivated is because my book is done that's why i'm so motivated i had <laughs> i had other i had free mental space there was some vacancy um all right so fan poll what part of crave freaked you out more jackson going feral after drinking leah's tea or leah shooting jackson in the heart because I remember when I read both of those scenes, like Jackson going feral, I was just like, eh, this is like the second eh. time that he's gone feral. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> it's old news. But then Leah pops out and shoots him. Like, I wasn't even surprised by Leah appearing and being, ha, 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 it was, I'm the bad guy all along. I wasn't surprised by that. But then she pulls out a gun and shoots Jackson and it all happens in one line. Like yep. and in the heart as well, and and at this point we don't even know like what the physicality of a vampire is like to know what actually does kill them. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> like, yeah. Like what? Genuinely, what would kill them? Do we know? Um, how did Jackson kill Hudson? I guess we never find out. The sword, the sword. Um, I'm just like, why? Why did Hudson have a sword? Um, uh, it was one of the. I 
items for something. Did, where did where did he find? <laughs> he needed it for something. His oh, item. Okay. It's a okay. It's a secret item, Amber. It it's came a to it came to him in a time of need <laughs> out of the sorting hat. It was the it was the it's the end game item that you need to defeat the final <laughs> boss. <laughs> I like to think that he came alive and then just found a suit of armor and went, yeah, I'll have that one. That I'll one. That one. Listen, it's yeah. not even a real one. It's like one of the ones you buy at the mall that's <laughs> dull that you hang on the wall. Yep. And th- and that's why Grace actually did survive. <laughs> it's it was because she, she went, no, 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 gargled it up. But actually, there was no threat. What? <laughs> it was just going to bonk him on the head. It had like plastic crystals in the hilt. <laughs> um. All right, so what do you think the audience uh, said was more shocking? Um, Jackson Leah. going feral or Leah shooting Jackson? Yeah, Leah, Leah, Leah. Yeah, yeah, overwhelming. Um, so drinking the tea, it was uh, 35%, and uh, Jackson getting shot was 65%. So, all right. So, and, and next is our question to the fans, and that was, if you were dating Jackson, would you trust him enough to let him fight you. Would um, you? Firstly, I wouldn't be dating Jackson. Um, but if I was dating Hudson, <laughs> I would I would absolutely trust him to buy me. But I think it would be more of a curiosity thing rather than a trust thing. It would be a like, I want to know what this feels like. And obviously, like being that teenage age. You kind of want to experiment and like explore yourself anyway. So I would be interested to just see what it felt like. Even if it was painful, I'm not too afraid of pain, except obviously breaking my arm. Um, but I'm not afraid of pain. Like I've got piercings, I've got tattoos. I'm, I'm, I'm good with pain. I, um, I think that I would be, I would be jumping headfirst into that like experience just to see what it felt like. But I don't think my brain would even tell me, oh, but what if he kills you? Because I'm like, well, meh. If he kills me, I'm only 17. I've not really done much with my life. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, I would say that like... like it's be- like I don't have a dependence or anything. Like, I'm like, yeah. well, if he... Yeah, I mean, meh. Well, assuming that you're Grace in this situation, you don't know about Hudson yet. Like, I, I would say, yeah. Oh, she knows. She knows. She, she she's she's a, she's a tease. She she thinks that she doesn't know, but she knows. She feels Hudson in her soul. She feels it in her bones. She knows that she is destined to stones. be. <laughs> it's always it the brother. Stones. She feels it. In yes. Her <laughs> always the brother. the brother. Um, but uh, assuming that I am in Grace's exact position, I'm gonna say yes, but only because Macy has kind of voiced how normal it is. She's not shocked. By the biting, um, no one seems shocked that it's. It seems like just a, a thing that that vampire couples might do. So, yeah, I would say as long as you know, I was in that exact position, I I might. But we got some really crazy answers, very like contrasting um, opinions. We did get a lot of yeses, yes with no comment, yes, 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 hell yes, yes. By the way, oh yes. <laughs> Uh, yes, let me be your meal, Jaxie. <laughs> let me. I'm trying to find like probably, of course, many ask, times. Like, will it will it leave a mark? Yeah, what kind of mark does it leave? Um, can you do it on like maybe like somewhere I can hide it as well? Yeah, like like, like just in case there's like that taboo of like what you've done. Yeah, I'm like almost 30. I don't want like if if my husband's going to leave a hickey on me and I got to go into my kid's school the next day, like, you know, yeah, and also don't do it in a place where it genuinely is going to hurt for the rest of the time where it's healing. Yeah. Like I know I know somebody who uh, she she likes them on her nipples and I'm like, no, no, Ow. no, it's rubbing on your no. bra. Yeah, no, stop. <laughs> stop with that. Let's see. Um. Okay, like a knee hickey could you <laughs> Ooh, a knee hickey does it have to be like i've never given a hickey in my life does it <laughs> i'm a, a hickey e not a hickey <laughs> does it have to be on like soft tissue uh i think it depends on the person some people it, they leave really easily some people they don't i my skin it usually like disappears within like a couple hours um but i've like when i was a teenager i like 
dated guys who they would last for like a week just because I think that it's I don't know, maybe it's like thickness of skin because that's all you're doing is you're just pulling the, the blood to the surface <laughs> yeah. of the skin. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, let's see. One person said, I'm into some kinky shit. So yeah, probably. <laughs> but uh, let's get into some of the more obscure answers and, and more logical ones, I would say. One person said, I mean, for me, starting all this stuff bites at least four months like into the relationship. Mm -hmm. Um. One person said no, but Hudson could drink me dry and I would thank him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's see. But he's mine, guys, so no. <laughs> um, <laughs> find us keepers. <laughs> Let's see. Before I met Hudson, yes. Right now, not so much. Um, yes, but only if we'd been together for more than four days. Yeah. yeah. A no, lot she, of people. She does jump into things a lot. Yeah, a lot of people said that four days is like that, not not after four days, too soon into the relationship. Yeah, it's you know I would say it's about an even mix of people saying yes and no though, so that's that's interesting, and I can't decide if it's because everybody loves Hudson or if it's um, just because it happened so so fast. And I would agree. Um, I it feel did, like and he didn't even really forewarn her as to like what it would feel like. Um... He he didn't really prepare her. I mean, like for ex for example, if you're a virgin and you've not done anything, and you've also you've grown up in a world where none of that is actually something that people do. You've grown up in a world of humans. You don't know what vampires can do. So, I would be really, I I would I would be jumping into it, interested and curious. But I definitely wouldn't be jumping in thinking, oh my God, this is going to be the best experience of my life. I'm going to enjoy it. It's going to be basically like having an orgasm. Like, I wouldn't know any of that going in. But I would be interested to see it because it would be such a big part of my husband's or my partner's life that for me to be able to give up that aspect for him to go out and drink other girls, I would be conflicted. <laughs> I'd be like, okay... Like w let's see if I can get past this, and and let's see if I can be that person for you, because I might enjoy it. But if I don't enjoy it, I'm going to have to make some compromise somewhere, because you still need to live. I think that uh, I think that they need to have like the Anna and Christian Gray sit down with the contract, like what check the boxes for what <laughs> you find acceptable to you. Bites on the neck. Bites on the wrist, bites on, I don't know, where Elbow else? Elbow hickey. <laughs> the knee hickey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. I think that that's it for this episode, of, unless you have any last minute notes, Amber. I have nothing. Perfect. Well, Except I'm very excited because it's my favorite part coming up. What's our favorite? What's your favorite? The bye bye. The, the, no, likes... no, <laughs> the, no, the dungeons. The oh, dungeons the is book. my favorite part. I thought you meant that. In the book. Not the bye bye. <laughs> it was my favorite. <laughs> yeah, the, when Amber was here. <laughs> when Amber was this here is, this in is the what US. We, left with. <laughs> we uh we always end the episode with the bye bye. <laughs> And Amber, I was, but I it, never. Because we were sat, we were sat right next to each other. We've never seen each other's faces when we've been doing the bye bye. And <laughs> I can't even say it. She... Apparently, I look like a robot or like a robot chicken no. with like the bye bye. And you my know... eyes really went high. And like, yeah. you know, when a chicken squawks, but its expression doesn't change at all, its <laughs> mouth just opens and it goes, bye bye. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Hey, everybody. All right. You know how you guys all left the, uh, the uh, garlic mushroom emojis on our Instagram uh, uh, Crave chicken. Series Aesthetic? Yeah. You guys, now you got to leave the chicken on all our posts. Every time we post something, leave a chicken so we know that you were listening. And uh, next uh, week's episode, we're going to have a giveaway. Yeah. Um, what are we going to give away? Are we going to give away like a hoodie? You want to do a hoodie? I don't know, but I'm I'm thinking that if you give me enough time, you might even get an original by Amber Marie. Oh, you want to do maybe dragon? Let's let's just I've never say drawn one. 
Yeah, try to do do us a flint, things. like a, a green dragon. Oh, I will do you a flint. Give you a flint. She'll do you a flint. <laughs> She'll do you a good flint. Yeah, we'll oh, do yeah. um we'll do uh we'll do some good stuff though, guys. We'll probably do um some some crave theme swag that you won't be able to get anywhere else. Uh again, we do not sell that merchandise. I know you see a lot of it um kind of circulating on Etsy and stuff, but we've talked to uh Entangled Teen Publishing and they do not allow you to just create crave merchandise and sell it um just be careful if you guys do that because ultimately they do own the copyright on the crave themed uh, merchandise and the cat beer academy logo so just be safe guys wouldn't want to see any of you get in trouble nor is it fair to uh, tracy and entangled teen to have their intellectual property sold so that's starla's little psa for the episode but the stuff that we give away we've already approved with entangled teen and we'll contact them and see if we can uh, get them in on the giveaway as well maybe we can get a merch box um, from them to give away to. Um, so that's going to be next week, December 22nd. Mark your calendars. We'll explain how to enter in the episode. So make sure that you tune in. That is going to be kind of a limited thing. So don't miss it. Make sure that you listen to it that week because you'll likely only have a week or two to actually enter the giveaway. And if you miss out, you'll have to wait until we do another one. And then lastly, guys, every Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time, there will be a new video posted on our YouTube channel exclusively. So make sure that you subscribe to Crave the Book Podcast on YouTube. YouTube. I'm going to be releasing a series of um, ASMR videos themed in different Crave environments. Uh, right now we have one up that is walking around the Catmere Academy grounds and it's got like snow falling and birds and snow crunching occasionally. It, it's it's really ambient and nice. And they make good Yule logs if you like set, like putting something on your TV for the holidays just kind of have as background noise then it's going to be good for those as well. And uh, next week's episode is going to be studying in the library with Jackson, going on a study date. Ooh, yeah. Do you like listening to those, Amber, while you work? Like I love listening to them. However, some of them get really samey. Um, so you can go for like a four-hour one. And mm -hmm. um, there is so only so many book flips that I can hear before yeah. I absolutely go mad. Um, and I think that's only because I'm usually contributing myself to the noises. Yeah. So... The noises don't quite gem, but I was thinking because you might struggle to actually get the sound bites for it, I was going to do one actually recording myself for her art studio. Yeah, that would be fun. I also found um like paintbrushes being like cleaned and things like that. So if we could get like the the drawing and the paintbrushing, and I could mm -hmm. layer them. Um, yep. the li the library one is really cool. I have the bell going off very muted in the background and then you hear the doors opening of the classrooms outside and the students leaving the classes and then you hear the doors shutting again where they've entered their next class. Um, there's nice. a lot of good, I, I would say that there are at least, at least 10 layers of sound in those, which is what makes them so immersive and dynamic. So yeah, that one's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, cool. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thanks we so much say for listening. Bye-bye in three, in, on, on three as well. Everybody right. has to join in on the three. All right. Everybody ready? All right. You count down, One, Amber. One, two, three. Bye-bye.